Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting. Hello, guys. Hello, guys. I'm free. Sorry. Um, so I used to be a pro gamer um, for, for many years. I had like played Dora and a couple of years for Singapore. And you know, I used my dreams to help uh, companies go to market. <laughs> Yeah, contact us. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, I'll be brutally honest. I have nothing prepared. Um, so we're going to keep this very casual and uh, just talk about some stuff that's on your mind. And please, if you feel free, raise your hand. If there are any questions in the audience as well, please feel, to, feel free to participate. I'm going to start off with a... Uh, we're going to pick sides. So, I would like to hear everyone's uh, first pick for the top gaming chain to launch product. Easy, Ronin. I think for me it's Ronin too. I would like to start with you two and say Ronin. <coughs> Say about Ronin is actually that they not only have player base, but 
they have experiences and support, right? Um, they've been building for more than four years, five years now, right? But Golden is a fairly new chain, you know, they were from X Infinity, then they transitioned, right? So with all the mistakes that they have made and learnings along the way, I think right now they are really the truly web tree chain uh, for gaming because they understand what the game, what you need to success, succeed in this space, right? So that's my simple answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, for me, why I chose Rodin is also because like, um, I mean they were pretty OG and XC Infinity was on Rodin and then I, I see a lot of like, I would say devs that I really respect a lot. Um, I mean like, for example, like Cyberpunk, uh, these people have a lot of experience because they went through the entire phase and they are all still on Rodin really. So like, I feel like if I am a game developer, I would choose Rodin. Right. I think instead of going over each and every chain, <laughs> uh, so you're working with a bunch of different projects um, and speaking to them fairly early on, I'm sure you hear a lot of insights as to at the stage where they're picking a platform to What is your kind of key recommendations for what people need to pay attention to when choosing that infrastructure? Uh, one of the main things by um, advising people to do um, is a bigger thing than that is I don't believe any game should stick to one chain. So any game that's locked in one chain, I think you're already shooting yourself in the foot. You should be on as many chains as possible unless they're trying to put a ring on it and they're offering you some fat money just to stay on that chain. But if they are going to be on one chain first, whichever one does, no one starts on the chain. It depends on what they're trying to do. If you're something that's going to be minting all the time and you're looking at chains that have got an exceedingly high gas fee, you're not going to keep people playing. So if they're going to some of these other ones that are offering now gas and stuff and things like that, I'd say it's a good starting point for them, but I would never lock myself as a game into exclusivity just to stay on one chain. Because in our space, we do have maxis. And if you launch your game on the wrong chain as well, it doesn't matter how much someone likes your chain and your game, if you're not on their maximalist chain, they're not going to play your game. So it's a lot of things they need to be looking at from terms of is this actually viable to work for? So like in the crowd we've got uh, boys called Play Alumia. They did some tests on their chain of mid in a mid lines for a MMORPG, which is an acceptable amount of items to have. But there is something that would be greatly um, detrimental to them just for the scale of what they need to do. So you need to think about, does this have enough scalability for my game as well as what they're offering me in their short term? Sky, I want to put you on the spot here. Um, I don't know how closely you work with Polygon, but I would assume that, well, to take a step back, in Web3, we generally see a lot of support coming from like the infrastructure layer, like the blockchain itself, in regards to uh, partnerships, promotion, that type of thing. In, in Web2, like, a game doesn't really see support from AWS, for example, uh, apart from potentially having a problem. When it comes to growth, and this is where I've been on the spot, how much support are you getting from is it, is it a key consideration, or do you think it doesn't really matter if you're enjoying that place? Uh, so I'm not going to criticism, like, especially how, how we work together, but uh, it's a, I want to like get to the basic. Uh, the sandbox has been built in the Ethereum first, so we're looking for a stability because of we have been on already. Uh, more than 100 uh, brand partners around the world, right? And they are more than two, and they are looking for something that is uh, secure, uh, affordable, and uh, they have to be uh, scale scalable, right? So uh, if you're asking about the support, we have been looking for it about our user. The support had by the user generated for the game. What does this mean? Like we are the one of any platform that we don't build by the sandbox, but have been built by uh, the community of the sandbox. 
it will be uh, happy migrant uh, from the Ethereum to the Polygon. The first thing is about the container for the brand and uh, so you have seen like the subset fully from the Polygon have been working a lot with uh, Web2, right? Uh, not only just a Starbucks uh, use pay but also a uh, home grab. So actually <coughs> the family have been like getting a lot of support to them because uh, what we are looking for is not only for the IP brand that we have been drinking like Gucci, uh, like a lot, right? But it's about like thousand and it can be increased to like 10 k 100 k for the creator to be able to like, be on the uh, polygon and make uh, their uh, continuing game success. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that. And Sophia, so as a Yale slash questing platform, uh, I'm assuming that you work with different games on different channels. Uh, I don't know if you have data points, but like anecdotally, do you see any uh, pushback from your, your community members if they have to create a new wallet or if they all of the same steps again for a new project? So let's, for example, let's say you do a lot of work with Polycom games uh, and then Roman approaches you to help promote a request for one of their games. Now your users have to go through all the steps, you know, A to Z. Is that something that Web3 native users are completely okay with, or do you see some drop off? Uh, like maybe some people think that one wallet is enough as well. Alright, yeah, let me share with you one of my personal opinion. Yeah, I still believe that if we could have like a single universal wallet, yeah, that would be the best way. Yeah, but right now, we are still not there yet. Yes, of course, there are some feedback from the community, but it depends on the project. Yeah, if the project is attractive enough, yeah, they would do anything yeah, to play that game. Yeah, you can have them like walk through the mountain, walk through everything yeah, to play that game. Yeah, they would do anything yeah, if the game is like, wow, this is like a game for me. Yeah, I have to do everything to get it. To get in there, I have to be the first to get the virus, to be the first people who hold the NFT. Yeah, they would do anything. So it depends on the project as well. Yeah, and there are other uh, average project as well. And then yeah, that's, uh, we get a lot of pushback. Yeah, why do I have like, to create a, a lot of follow? I already have MetaMask. Can I just put that? Like, yeah, sure, you can put that, but we are going to send you the NFT, the prices, the white list, uh, yeah, into that wallet, yeah, the wallet number, the wallet address that you can put, yeah, but if you put MetaMask, even though you get the price, you might not be qualified to get it. Yeah, so if you would like to be a part of the gaming community, in that community, yeah, you need to do something. Yeah, you need to uh, educate and be open-minded because right now in the Web3 space it's still like very early and it's wild wild west. Yeah, as we all know, yeah, we have to try this and that. If it's not good, yeah, then drop it and try another one. Yeah, let's see. Um, fridge. It's a right point fridge. All right, fridge. Um, so, game needs to be good, right? Everyone says it, it makes sense. Um, but it's also not really true. Let's, like, I'm gonna just say, for example, uh, and no shots fired here, but like, let's speak big time, for example. Um, the game is arguably unpolished, let's say, right? It's got, it's got a ways to go, and that's not when the game development, no, no, uh, no diesel to it now. But once the edge all came, it was an incredible UA incentive, a big influx of new players in the game. When you're advising on go to market, like without you know something like a broken record and like you gotta make a game fun and stuff like that, where does the token incentive come? And although we're all fairly aware by now that it's unsustainable, but is there is there a what is the silver lining to using like financial incentives to bring players into the game? Um, so I feel that like based on all the games I played like, for the years, um, 
like, I think there's two sides, right? One is you you are like an investor, right? So the let's say for example I'm I'm behind the scenes, so I can know the path I gave or the game before, like other players know. So I, I get to see whether this game is good, whether it's fun. Because I feel like a lot of players, uh, when they play a game, they innocently play, and then they don't even know that anything in within the game has possibly fun, right? Uh, so, like, why would you buy a land? Why would you buy cosmetics? So, like you mentioned token. So I think a lot of games in, in this like space is not fun. Right? It's all like I would say a risky to concept. And there are half of the people who come into the game, they know the alpha, they know there are this company raise money and it's a party and they want to get into the league. So they will do whatever it takes as a shield is like a game, right? And on the other side you have like experienced people who are really like here to view. Um, and you know they are experienced, they have a huge war chest. Um, you, are, you know they are, they are not here to be for a shelter. And they know how to create token signals that will allow people to spend and they spend effort to work on their tokenomics. So, for example, if I have a company go to market, I want to know one thing is that do you have funds? If you are self-funded, how long is your run rate? And how are you going to incentivize these people? Is it going to be a wrong move? And if you can't sustain, you have to make sure the game is fun and then you have stats that you can raise funds from the outside world, right? Yeah. One way for yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to speak on the big time as well. We work quite close with them. I fire shots at them all the time about their game and the things that annoy me about the game. Um, mainly that the overworld could just be a corridor with these gates either side so I don't have to spend ages running around them for a gate that I actually want. Um, I think what they've done that has worked well, um, I did actually do a sponsor video, I know it was set out, on their tokenomics, and I did like one of the things they did, which was looking at how much was generated compared to how much was spent. I think that's where it's kind of like, it keeps some crazy numbers, but it's kind of settled down for a moment now. I don't think it's going to stay where it's settled, it'll probably go down more, but the way they set it up with such a use required in the game to do this thing, use their token, like the use was there straight away. There's a lot of people that argue on Twitter that this token is only meant for the economics of the game, it's not meant to be making more money. You're like, okay, well, the game you're speaking about isn't playable. So right now that token is only to be able to their game and be playable for a long time before they give out their token. And I think that is a fantastic way for them to have done it. Just because the people that want to work the most, they already know how to play the game. And they are already ready. I think that's why there was such a drive for bottles in the token. Because someone had to generate the in-game tokens as well. And that was the experience of players that have been there since like the, the Ruby or the Gold passes as well. One thing that I do think they need to be looking at is how they are going to make this sustainable. Because it can't be you need people to be spending for it to keep going this way, otherwise it will keep dropping off. And I think that's where them launching after it's already playable and something that we deal specifically around big time, that's what's keeping them going. This point is a fantastic social game. If you try and play on your own like I do, because I play on Thai time and no one is playing when I play in human games, it is a horrible experience playing alone. So it also has a social aspect and the earning aspect. We've got one person that's playing out with us, because we used to be a guild, so we still have some of the years ago. 
Um, sandbox. Um, so for many years, people have been staking or buying on the secondary market, uh, and vested tokens have been slowly coming out. Now that, so if I if I'm correct, it's been maybe just over a year that like you started to do the alpha tests. Um, so each alpha test has a set number of tokens as rewards. I think the recent, like it's millions of sand as well, right? Like significant uh, reward pools. I'm curious, and from a growth perspective, I'm curious to hear your opinions on how important of a role are these rewards uh, within the alpha test itself? Does it bring new players in? Does it reactivate old holders who have really participate? Or is it purely speculative? Thank you for the invitation. It's because uh, this is probably like one uh, big topic that we have been discussing recently. Uh, when we talk about uh, game time, uh, to be fine, like people come to the uh, crypto and blockchain just for uh, uh, something. Yeah, this is a dream. But when we have to build something new and we want to draw people and make it more uh, attractive, actually we use uh, financial or like uh, incentivize people to come into the platform, right? Somehow we can use it in terms of like if we are busy, if we are like uh, the, the financial perspective is okay for like uh, short term. But the long term and the sandbox, we did not see like this. We have seen like how we can uh, on board not only just the player, but also the player itself can be the creator. But uh, if you look at in detail about like the reward of the sandbox, we have uh, the different kind of uh, user in the sandbox. The first one is uh, the sandbox land owner. We have the sandbox outer owner. And we have uh, the sandbox as an order as well, and also the creative community. When we talk about reward, it means like we just only like recently for NGNG, the one who kind of like be a part of uh, the sandbox land owner. And uh, I think the reward is just only uh, one part. When we want to build more growth in the market, we have to think about the long term. The short term is like we can do some uh, quick win to get like people in the crypto market, people who play in the game five. But in the long term, it's still like we pretty niche market, right? What we have, we like we just thinking about like if the content is fun, we gonna spend like a uh, day to be on your house, like a uh, week, skip like a uh, homework, skip doing like a uh, job club, right? So this is a key of. We want to build something, not only like in Web2, but to be considered in Web3 is about the content. How fun your content, right? Reward is just a one part, but if this is something that is between the sun, right? No one can play your game, right? Even you give like a money to playing, so they're gonna start considering like, uh, I spending like an hour is it like uh, give the reward enough, right? So the thing is we have seen like the key of uh, value by we bringing uh, the web pool partner, for example, music and entertainment, to, to not only like just to maintain and retain the customer and the player in the sandbox, but also acquiring the new one. So I believe uh, the reward is somehow that we reserve for the land owner to bring the value to the sandbox. And also in the meantime, we bring all the IP and brand and we also come into the retreat. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's end on a little spicy today. Um, taking a step away from our day jobs, okay? We're in a safe space. I want to hear everyone's opinion on whether there is more potential earnings, more potential upside in a new token or slash airdrop versus a token that is nearing the end of its vesting schedule. That's, that's fairly obvious. It's going to be a new token. Um, whenever they get listed, it's going to be a few X easy. 
Um, whereas if the best thing is gonna be opening, like A, look at what A is, with a huge downside. I think the selling pressure is gonna be continuing, so that's an interesting one. Um, for me, I think it depends on, on the market, right? I mean, if let's say, for example, with all these penalties happening, estimate things here, and, and you happen to have your double penalty, I would say maybe there's, there's more upside there. So I think, uh, personal perspective, I think it's more that you brought up somehow like you will be able to catch up the train uh, faster now. Yeah. I think it's more like how it's going on uh, in the trend of the crypto market. Yeah. Um, if I knew more about this, I wouldn't be as poor as I am. So I'm going to tie it slightly more into games. Right? The same spiciness, I know that's what you're after. And it's the idea of these games that um, are released in the token. And one of the things I've seen people that are swapping from being NFT influencers to gaming influencers uh, only buy a token for a game that's already playable. You are not going to make the same amount of games if the game is already playable. You're going to need to get in before a game is too overdeveloped if you're only about the games. Because then you're betting with the speculators. As soon as the game is playable, you have a more like, vivid idea of what this game is going to be. Whereas if you're just printing pretty words, you can use your imagination to assume what my game is going to be. And that's where people are going to be making money. Yeah, to me, uh, I would say it's always going to be the new token. Yeah, because uh, as we have been through in this horrible market in the past few months, several months ago, that we have been very great, it's more likely very difficult to go back to the way it was. And then for the new token, it's going to be like, okay, then we risk it. And then it's just going to take like only like, not a lot of volume, yeah, to get like 2x, 3x, or 10x. Yeah, but once the token has been dropped like 90%, you have like to go to like a thousand percent to go back to yeah where it was. So I, I would say the new token. Before we move on to a quick Q&A, because the consensus seems to be new tokens, and I agree that speculation helps when the game is not as big token, etc. But to put things into perspective, uh, the two largest gamers over the last 12 months were Gaming and Nakamoto Games. They're two tokens, Naka and, and Gaming. Both games have been out for more than a year, more than two years, I believe. Uh, so just something to put into perspective. Like, like, think about when you get home and you're, 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 you're trying to make it in <laughs> um, Is there any questions? Anyone on the table, feel free to ask anything. I listen very closely to what you're saying, I'm very thankful for your input. But <laughs> let me ask you your personal opinion. Our um, strategy was we have a, a physical board game that is launched digitally. So we use the first token to get the investors to buy in on the company. But when considering to do the launch pad token afterwards, does that make sense to you in terms of how this market works, or is it completely different from what you use? I can explain a little bit better if you want, but can you get what I'm, what I'm asking? <laughs> and stop me halfway through my answer if I don't get what you mean. But I see people that I see people that um, are doing the token before a game, and I've always spoken on the same big time. I don't like people that do the token before the game, but I fully see the utility of it as a game studio, as a way to run, raise funds to then develop. The only time I then get pro uh, problems with it is I've seen game studios that have done their initial token, they've raised with that, they've used that, this is what we're going to be developing, you go into the business, you're helping us succeed, thanks for supporting us. Then they've dropped another token, which is a token they're going to use for a different thing. And then they've raised on that as well. I think at a point it needs to not be happening. You do one and then you raise. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I can get that one, but there's if it keeps going on for too long is when I would start to get a problem with it. If you didn't raise enough with one of your initial tokens going out, and then maybe the secondary token you put out that's more publicly available rather than private people coming in, then I can get behind that as a way of kind of kickstarting yourself within our space, which is a reason a lot of indie devs are developing in our space, but then there's just some of them that take a piss for and they just keep dropping new ones and be like, oh, can't we buy it with this? And like, at some point you need to produce something for us. We can't just keep doing it. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would add uh, two alternative options. Um, I think a more common approach in, in Web3 would be to first launch an NFT collection and then have holders of that NFT collection be allocated when that token launch occurs. Uh, later down. Or you just go Kickstarter and then do a token. It doesn't have to always like have a token, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a question. I mean, because the, the topic now is like creators and community talks, right? But I mean, earlier on <coughs> when we did an introduction of today's event, I also tapped into how early we are in Thai market, and I think like today we have mixed crowds of gamers, um, developers, builders, and so on. So I feel like maybe we can share more opportunities for people that want to get into web streams, right? Like for example, for BTT, when you you know you have to create this platform and there are opportunities for users to come and engage with different games, what are the opportunities for those people to really make money or um, develop or become like have a career? Um, for you as well, John, to a game CG, what, what are the opportunities for users or content creators or you know, builders? Um, for Sandbox as well, like Sandbox has a lot of partner studios. Um, I understand that you know, like you can also engage in different projects within Sandbox. And then as a programmer and also content creators, and for you as well, um, Joe, or as a I don't really have an answer for this question, um, but I would maybe add on to it and, and say from my own personal perspective, I thought it was quite unusual why so traditional markets, traditional gaming markets, Thailand represents a relatively large segment uh, above average of and um, per capita like higher spending to some other uh, countries in Southeast Asia. So in addition to like, what opportunities are available, um, specifically with Thailand, how are these opportunities uh, particularly exciting in, in this country? Um, maybe we start. Right, yeah, thank you for the question. <laughs> Yeah, first of all, in terms of community in Thailand, basically, uh, for VGG, uh, we can say that directly that we are a, plat uh, a platform of opportunity. We have a lot more opportunity for you, not just a opportunity to play Web3 games. We also offer more like to be a part of community because sometimes when you play games by yourself at home, and then yeah, sometimes it gets lonely, and then yeah, at some point you quit. Yeah, but once you have Friends, yeah, to play with, to like go uh, break some boss together in a party, and then yeah, it makes you feel like oh, you feel the sense of belonging. Yeah, that's a, a place for you. Yeah, we have a place for you here, and not just for the game. Right now, we are building a platform that is going to offer like a job opportunity in the Web3 space. For example, in terms of gaming, you can also become like a game tester. Yeah, that's something that you can be once you are in, within our community and you play a lot of games and then you have experience. Yeah, that's something that you can do as well. And we have like a lot of connection in the Web3 gaming space as well. We can also offer you like a moderator job yeah, for other community, other gaming community. For example, if you don't have a moderator, yeah, you can ask from us as well. Yes, we can train them, we have uh, we have experienced people, we have uh, speakers, yeah, to coach you, to train you, yeah, to be at the professional level. Yeah, that's something that we are aiming to go for. I'll, I'll go on next. Uh, specifically for Thailand, I'm looking into my own camera now, because we're mainly Philippines, and I think we should do 
more Thailand stuff, games. Um, specifically for Thailand is, uh, before I was doing all this, I was a kindergarten teacher and I taught all the other ages of the world here in Thailand a while ago now. And in Thailand, the, the, young, the youth, they're fantastically tech savvy. And I think they're just not exposed enough to all the roles you can do in Web3. Even if it's around gaming, then you can be a writer, you can be an assistant to help organize people. There's so many things that people don't look at. A lot of my friends that are younger, ties around in their 20s, they think they're only going to get into the space that they're content creating. Which some of them, yeah, they can fantastically do that. But all of them know how to write well. They can just do copywriting. I know some of them that are in Web2 jobs, and those Web2 jobs exist in Web3, but a much higher pay grade. And people are thinking too small on what jobs are available in Web3 compared to what they can do. Most Web2 jobs, there's a counterpart in Web3 that you can do, and then you can source yourself out to a different country as well, where you're going to be getting a better wage than what you will be doing in Thailand. So the main thing I would say for any of one in Thailand that's trying to get into the space, if you're tech savvy to the point that you can just use Google Sheets, I reckon would be a console that you can do help with someone else. At games, we do a lot of work with people that are in the Philippines, they come on, they call them now doing research for us, they're helping us out with the news and stuff like that. I'm aiming to try and change that to the new times as well, as I've been here six years and I've got people here that I know can do these things. I've got two people that help me with a lot of stuff I do. Unfortunately, I'm not as big as some of these other people, so I don't have huge treasuries to help bring other people along, but I can show people what they can do when they need to not be thinking so closely of what they could do and think what they could do. Any job you do normally, you could probably do it work for you. Before I answer this question, anyone here is the uh, web free gamer? Anyone here web free gamer? We're looking for gamer. <laughs> okay, how about the builder or the creator? Hey! Anyone here is a web free gamer builder? Why are you are here? What the hell do this event? <laughs> okay, half half. So, like question with the right answer for the right person with your time and we did not randomly select the country. We look at the data, the number of the uh data stuff, the data chain around the world and also uh, Thailand and Asia. I have to say we are in the top ten and seven land for term of the land order. This means we have a big opportunity for you people uh, to invest in the sidewalk. The second part is about if we have someone invest, do we have any like the player or not? I have to say, <laughs> we are big in terms of the player. We are the one of our uh, top five and our uh, top three for the uh, Asia market. Why? Uh, you can look at like the uh, digital and also the internet asset in, in Thailand, right? So this is a, what we uh, make a decision why we decide to grow the in Thailand market. And we have so many like OG people in the sandbox here. So I have to say in terms of Thailand, we have people who already like onboarded into our uh, web free web uh, wallet with our uh, crypto market, right? This is a one that is can be like your show ranking if you want to get into. And the second part is uh, the sidewalk cannot like, be successfully without like, uh, Web2 community and also IP and brand. So uh, the past like, three, four quarters, we have been onboarding uh, 12 brand partners in Thailand. So we have been showing them like how and why uh, the gaming platform that have been like almost 12 years jump into the blockchain, why this uh, matter to you and why this matter to uh, the creator and the player side. So I, I'm not just only believe, but it has been proven by the data number and it has been proven by uh, for Kisha, right? She also tied and she has seen like how the market is have been growing and I think uh, this is uh, almost like the first event that we force and we get a lot of uh, support and attendee participants. Uh, to be honest, when I go, uh, went to many events, most people in Web3 know me, right? But this event is bring like a uh, new partnership, a uh, new friend that I can see how uh, the market is keep like a good moment that uh, even you my first time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so for me, I, I personally think like Thailand have a lot of gamers, like, because I, I play pro, right? So like, I, I used to play with a lot of 
high people in Dota and like they are also compete with Bank of Titans and League of Legends. Um, I think often people don't really see like that actually being a gamer you can also game the system, right? I, I feel like this is uh, another perspective. If a game can allow you to game the system, it means this game has made it and there's an economy. Like for example, say Maple Story, right? You don't necessarily have to just play the game. You just create a board, farm the muscles, sell it off money, right? Yeah. So I feel like as a gamer, you sometimes have to think out of the box. Of course, you don't have to be uh, a dev, but you can work with a dev because you know how the game works. Yeah, I think um, opportunity for Thailand is huge. First of all, it's clearly very early. And I think not only VGG and Sandbox, you guys are doing a part in education, right? I think any builder in local scene have to localize and translate in your slangs, your ways to show that the potential and the good things about Web3 and not just about Web3 Gaming. I think before Web3 Gaming, I think it's a good way to use gaming to onboard but the basic skill is a must, right? How to have a wallet, how to, how to have uh, security and so on, which I think is uh, ultimately very important. But I would say, as myself a content creator, there, I think definitely you guys need more content creators because I cannot name a content creator in uh, Thailand that I know of that played games before, um, at least for in Web3, right? But other than that, I think making yeah, education and sharing the passion to Thailand and I, I hope to see a bigger event next year all right right now it's really amazing but next year I want to see more gamers you can bring more gamers like we have tournaments and stuff like that I think it's gonna be a very a big leap I think for the next year for everyone in Thailand to work together on but other than that you guys have really great stuff strategic location good um, very nice transport very everything right infrastructure and everything you guys have exchanged to support you guys you guys have VDG you guys have sandbox and so on so take advantage of all these builders around you and see how together we can build a better uh, local scene in Thailand it doesn't matter just Thailand Philippines whatever and then from there I think um, you know you guys will have you know make better events bigger events and ultimately uh, climbing I think the crypto adoption in Asia, Southeast Asia for at least there we go. Um, and next year, Vision, okay? We're gonna have a panel with fully Thai 